My name's Nick Burfitt. I work for Kantar Media. I'm the managing director of our APAC business. I'm from the UK, but I live in Singapore. I'm going to spend a few minutes just talking about audience measurement, TV audience measurements particularly. Before I do that, a little bit about Kantar Media. So we're part of the Kantar Group. That also includes companies such as IMRB, TNS, Millwood Brown, World Panel. It's quite a large organization. Kantar Media itself is a global division of Kantar. Um, we do a few different things. Uh, ad tracking, news monitoring, consumer surveys, but a core part of our business is audience measurement. And in that context, we spend quite a bit of time thinking about what is it that, we're gonna, that we have to measure now and what is it that we're going to have to measure in the future. And as part of that, we think about, well, how are people going to be consuming television or TV content? In what environment and in what situations will they be viewing TV? In our view, for the foreseeable future, many years into the, into the future, we think TV viewing will still take place where it can on large screens in home. There's some data published just a few days ago from the States that indicated that still over 90% of all viewing of video content takes place on a TV screen. And that's in a market that's very well developed, lots of other opportunities to watch on different devices and stuff. But still the vast, vast majority of viewing of content takes place on a TV screen. Yes, undoubtedly it's changing, and it's fragmenting across channels, across place, across time, across devices. And there will be viewing on laptops, there will be viewing on tablets, there will be viewing on smartphones. But historically, TV audience measurement has underpinned the trading of television airtime. The, the buying and selling of TV advertising, and it continues to do that. That is a large industry. It's worth over 200 billion US dollars globally. And what television audience measurement does, or the data that comes out of TV audience measurement services provides, is a common currency. So it's a currency that everyone who uses it accepts and trusts. And it it allows companies that use that data, broadcasters, media agencies, their advertiser clients, production companies, regulators, to assess the value of content in terms of its acquisition or its sale, the scheduling of that content, and the buying and selling of the advertising that takes place around that content, either between shows or within shows. And the TV advertising industry is pretty resilient. Um, the numbers that you're looking at there um, show that the TV advertising market is doing okay. It's doing pretty well. The, the, this is, these are global numbers from a sister company of ours, Group M. The, the media that's suffering the most, I think, is probably print, although maybe not so much in India or this part of the world. Um, and the one that's growing the most is clearly digital or, or internet. But TV and the TV advertising market, which as I just said is underpinned by TV audience measurement data, is still pretty robust and resilient. At the start I said Kantar Media does a few things, one of which is audience measurement, and we do that in lots of countries. And we do it under a variety of different conditions. Sometimes TV measurement is run by the research company as a commercial enterprise, we have a few of those. Sometimes it's under the auspices of what's called a media owner committee. Australia is an example of that, Norway is another. And sometimes it's run under the remit or the guidance or the ownership of a joint industry committee. So that is where the interested stakeholders in TV measurement come together, create an organization and and take ownership of the service, often contracting it out to a company such as Kantar Media. Um, and there are quite a few of those types of committees around the world. One exists here, BARC, B-A-R-C, um, but there are several others in Europe and a few others around the world. There's one in Hong Kong, for example, where we're just setting up a new audience measurement service in that market. And because we've got that 
global knowledge and expertise and experience. We've been, the, we've been in the audience measurement business for over 50 years. We have developed a blueprint, and we've called that from TV to TV. And what we mean by that is from television to total video. So this transition from people viewing a single piece of TV content as it's transmitted, as it's broadcast on a TV set in the corner to being able to watch wherever they want, whenever they want, on whatever device they want, at whatever time they want, that is total video, whereas before it was, it was television. So we've got this concept of TV to TV. <clears throat> and that blueprint encompasses lots of different elements as to how TV audience measurement should develop, can develop going forward. At its core is a panel, a measurement panel. So as I say, at its core, our view is that TV audience measurement needs to be centered around a core measurement panel. That's the, the way in which TV measurement has been done for many years. It's the way it's done here in India by Bark. Um, and within that panel, so people are recruited onto a panel, they're opting into a measurement service, and the way that's supported is through something called people meter technology. So that is a specially designed meter that specifically uh, put into homes for the sole purpose of measuring people's TV viewing or the household TV viewing and the viewing of the people within that household. And allied to that people meter technology, there are two ways of capturing what content is being transmitted or exactly what they're watching. One is audio matching or fingerprinting, where the meter takes a signature and references it back. And the other one is watermarking, where a, a watermark or a signature is inserted in the, in the content, an inaudible watermark, I should say. Um, and that's picked up by the meter. And that is the technique that's used here by Bark in India. And Bark, in running their audience measurement panel for TV audience measurement, use the Kantar Media watermarking to determine what content is being watched by people that are on that panel. So that's core TV. And then, obviously, there is now a need as people's viewing fragments, maybe not as quickly as people might think, to measure what we call extended TV, so to go beyond core TV viewing or measurement into something called extended TV measurement. So to measure all viewing of TV or video content in and out of home on whatever device it might be taking place. And to do that, we've developed a new meter that complements our people meter. So we call it focal meter. It's a meter that attaches to the Wi-Fi router or broadband router in, the, in a panel member's home and tracks all of the video content, the IP-delivered content that's viewed or delivered through that router. And that can capture not just viewing of traditional broadcast content, but also viewing of uh, OTT services as well. So beyond that core panel, for which we can use metering technologies to capture both linear, time shift, cap, uh, catch up, on demand viewing, digital viewing. There are various other things that can be brought to bear in this blueprint for audience measurement. One is potentially boosting the digital element of the service by creating an online boost panel and merging that into the core panel. One is by using what we call return path data or set top box data. Sometimes people know that is. So that is data that's able to be collected from digital set-top boxes. So if you think about operators in this market, Tata Sky, Videocon, Dish, Hathaway, they have the ability, in some cases, to, to enable their set-top boxes to capture viewing data. And that can be used, and then to return that data, that's why we call it return path data, to return that data to a central location, and that can be integrated within an audience measurement service. That's quite a well-established method of capturing data, audience data now. We've been in that field for 10 years. We've worked with lots of different operators, as you can see there, in many, many markets around the world. We've captured data from millions and millions of homes. And we've done various proofs of concepts in the UK, in Malaysia, and in Pakistan, where we've integrated data from set-top boxes into people meter data, 
and we've proven that it can work and it can add value to the overall measurement service. It can improve the, uh, the stability of the data. So we have a core panel, we have the possibility of using RPD, and we also have the possibility of introducing what we call set meter panels. So people meters work by having a meter in the home and people pressing a button on a remote control when they come in and out of the home. Set meters will work by not removing that people element, just capturing what the TV set is doing, and we have various statistical and modeling techniques that can tell us who in the home is watching. And that provides a much more cost-effective way of getting to larger panel sizes. And finally, there's online census data. So as people's viewing of content on digital devices takes place, that viewing can be captured, can be tagged and captured and collected as a census level data. And that online census data can also be integrated in with core measurement data. And we're already doing that in quite a few countries around the world. Um, in the Netherlands, we're already live with an integrated audience measurement service that's incorporating both panel metered data and online census data together to create a much more robust measurement service. We've been awarded a contract in the UK to do something similar by the industry committee there. We're in the process of setting up a new service in Norway. We have been awarded a contract in Hong Kong to do something similar. So as our measurement services develop and new services or new contracts come into place, then what we're seeing is that they are moving from a, simply having a core panel measuring traditional TV viewing to having an integrated set of data points all integrated into a single database that provide a much better data set for the industry to work with. So a few snapshots of data that illustrate what I've been talking about. So the night, this is some data from the UK. The night manager was a drama produced by the BBC. It's live. Uh, and this is looking at the viewing profile of the audience to that show across the different platforms from which it could be watched. So just under half of the audience to that particular show, the final episode of it, was watched live. So at the time, it was, it was broadcast on a Sunday night, if I recall, in the UK, 9 p.m. Uh, so about half of the total audience to that show watched it at 9 p.m. on that Sunday night, on the day it was transmitted. Some others watched it recorded it and watched it later that evening or later that day. That's what the green bar is, viewing on the same day as live. About 30% recorded it and watched it in time shift, either within seven days or, or within a four week window. And about 5% of the audience to this show, this drama, watched it on demand. So they went to a catch up service and watched it as and when they wanted to watch it. Okay, and that was one of the most popular shows of last year in the UK. It was made available on every single digital platform, pretty much in the UK, but still half of its audience was watched at the time it was, at the time it was broadcast. Example from the Netherlands, where we're already running a, uh, an integrated measurement service. So this is, a, again, one of the most popular shows in the Netherlands about... Again, over half of the audience to that show is watching it at the time it's broadcast. About a third is recording it and time shifting it. And 15, 16% or so are watching it on an on-demand platform. Same for various other shows in the Netherlands. So there is an element of what we call extended TV viewing going on, but it's maybe not as big as people might imagine. And finally, out of home. So in certain countries and for certain types of program, there is a need to measure out of home. And we're doing that in our service in Norway. And there are certain types of shows or certain environments in which the out of home audience can contribute a significant amount to the total audience to a particular show. Of course, sports is of, is of another good example. Sports shows are another, sports shows or sports events are another good example of that. So let me just finish by making a few comments. In our view, and in the view of some of our clients, who are primarily broadcasters and media agencies, there's an even greater need today than there has been previously for clear standards of audience measurement. Um, 
the data that comes out of audience measurement services, such as the one that we run or the ones that we contribute to, such as the Bark service here in India, they're an absolutely critical and vital part of enabling companies to understand how to sell their airtime or, the, or how to benchmark their media investment. The value of independent and transparent and audited panels, that provides the confidence for an industry to, to make that trading happen. But it's also not enough to rely on the way in which audience measurement has always been done with core panels and people meet technology. It's absolutely important and necessary that new data sets or the availability of new data sets as they are uh, become available in particular markets are used and harnessed within the overall audience measurement currency service. They can complement the strength of the core measurement data. They're not good enough on their own typically because they don't represent the whole market, but they can play a, a very important and vital role in helping to meet this challenge of the fragmentation of viewing. And if people tell you TV is dead, they're lying. Um, because it isn't. TV viewing and viewing of video content is very robust, is, is sustaining itself, is not going away. Yes, it's fragmenting. I've heard it said that TV is being liberated. It's not dying. So the ability to watch content or video content or TV content is being liberated to take place on other devices in, at other times and in other places. Um, but TV is not dead. Thanks for listening. <laughs>